This video has been assimilated by the Tarantula Collective. Resistance is futile. Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Today I am showcasing five awesome dwarf species. A lot of people often overlook dwarf species because of their lack in size, but I think that they're pretty awesome. I was the same way until I started keeping some of them and I fell in love. Notice I didn't say my top five because I honestly only have about seven dwarf species, but these five I think are really amazing and I think that you should know about them because you might find them amazing too. And before I continue any further, I want to give a big thank you to my friend Richard at the Tarantula Collective for sending me the awesome swag merch. Is swag even a thing anymore? Anyway, thank you so much, Richard. I really appreciate it. I love the face cover, the neck gaiter, is that what it's called? Um, if it wasn't so warm in this room, I'd probably wear it throughout the entire video. If you haven't checked out Richard's channel, check out the Tarantula Collective. Yeah, you probably have because he's far more popular than I am. But anyway, there's a link down below in the description so you can check him out. One last thing before I get going. Um, I was on Facebook going through the tarantula communities and looking at all the posts and pictures that people had made and I came across a post um, by a guy who had posted some tarantula related artwork and it was really nice it's really cool stuff and he was looking for some feedback on it so I said that his artwork was beautiful and um, that it reminded me of tattoo flash because of this, the style and everything and uh, you know that I thought it was great so he commented back, he thanked me for the, for the positive feedback, and he said that one of the designs was actually a custom tattoo design that he'd done for somebody. And I don't know if this was his inspiration for making more, but he had several designs of different tarantulas and they all were pretty amazing. So anyway, he asked me if he could private message me. So I said, fine. And he did, he private messaged me and he first of all said that he enjoyed my YouTube channel. He recognized me, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, another thing was that he was from Croatia, which I thought was even more cool. Um, but the thing, <laughs> of course I had to ask if he knew Petco of Dark Den. And uh, he said that he did, and he, he said they weren't like friends exactly, but that he had met him, and in fact he had contributed a male, I think it was uh, a geniculata, uh, to Petco for one of his breeding projects. And I think it didn't turn out so well. But um, if there's a video, if you've seen that video, that was his male that he contributed to Darkden. So anyway, he asked me, he said that he was starting up a little business and uh, using his tarantula artwork and he wanted to know if I, if he could send me some. So I was like, sure, you know, I'd love to get stuff and especially when it's tarantula relate, related stuff and it looks so good like that, you know, I definitely wanted to get some. So he got my address and everything and he said he would send me some stuff. So this came a few days ago and I've been holding on to it because I wanted to do uh, uh, I guess a, an unboxing or something on camera and so I'm dying to know what's in here I know there's stickers I know that but I don't know what the designs are or anything like that but I I'm dying to share them with you they are amazing and I'm gonna give you his information in just a second all right so let's see what we got here and this came pretty quick he's from Cro Croatia but um, there it is. All right, so he gave me a little sheet of stickers, and these were the designs that I was telling you about, that they are so awesome. You got the P Metallica right there, and I believe that's a green bottle blue, and I'm gonna say that that is a Venezuelan Sun Tiger, P Erminia. Um, that would be a Clil Tocat, um, <laughs> vegans, I think. And last but not least, and I think this is probably my favorite. I love the design on this one, and that is an HMAC there. So, yeah, that's awesome. A little sheet of stickers, a little sample sheet. So, definitely uh, put these up somewhere in my room here 
where I can um, look at them and enjoy them. But anyway, let me give you his information so that you can check him out because he has grown his business like overnight. And I'll post a little uh, screenshot thing here where you can see it. But his website is everythingexotic.com, everything-exotic.com. And he sells a whole bunch of stuff. Um, he's got t-shirts, of course. He's got bedding sets, car accessories, hooded blankets, which sounds pretty cool. Um, different kinds of apparel, just not just t-shirts, but hoodies and stuff, stickers and mugs. So yeah, definitely check him out. And that is everythingexotic.com and I'll post a link down below for his stuff. Cool stuff, thank you so much, Carlo. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for the stickers. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is stay tuned at the end of this video because I have a question for you regarding the future of this channel and I will need your input on that. So if you could please, if you want to skip to the end, you can do so or if you can watch the whole thing and at the end wait, wait around a little bit to answer my question. Let's get started. So we're talking about five awesome dwarf tarantulas. So first of all, why dwarf tarantulas? Well, when most of us get into the hobby, when we think about the word tarantula, you always think about something that's large, hairy, and imposing. So um, we often overlook the dwarf tarantulas, anything that's, that's relatively small. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. First of all, in my case, when I first got into tarantulas, I had no idea that there was such a thing as dwarf tarantulas. I only knew a few species, and most of those were relatively big. Um, second of all, when I was introduced to dwarf tarantulas, they weren't very impressive to me. Although they come in all kinds of colors and shapes and everything, it, it was just something that didn't really impress me because they didn't get very big. And in some cases, they looked like true spiders, in my opinion. So those were things that did not impress me, and it was just something that I didn't really want to get into. And um, probably the most daunting thing was their diminutive size. When you're talking about a sling, even on a regular tarantula, slings can be pretty small. But when you're talking about a dwarf tarantula, you're talking about something that's about the size of a grain of rice or smaller. So that can be pretty intimidating to take care of something that small. First of all, what do you feed it, right? Another thing would be, um, is it gonna be eating at that small size? And that probably is one of the furthest things from the truth as far as being intimidated by what they can eat. Um, a lot of the dwarf species in my experience seem to be very feisty and very willing to take down prey especially prey that is larger than themselves and i would imagine that just has to do with survival when you're that small you probably want to eat as much as you can to gain as much size as quickly as possible so that you don't become prey for everything out there in the wilderness so that's just my belief but you know that could be completely Far from the truth. But anyway, let's get on with it. Um, notice I didn't say my top five dwarf tarantulas or anything like that. Um, to be honest with you, I only have probably seven species of tarantula that are dwarf or considered dwarf. Um, so I, I don't have a broad range of tarantulas that I can say, oh, these are my type, top five picks. But these are ones that I chose because I felt like they were really nice tarantulas and they're, they have different attributes for each one that I just think makes them awesome. All right, so let's get this thing started. Um, shall we do the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. So this is number five. Number five is Hapalopus species Columbia. And I'll zoom in here on this enclosure now right now I'm pretty much just showing you empty amic boxes or amic boxes with stuff inside of them but um, so every now and then I catch them out and they might come wandering out and so on so hopefully we'll, we'll see that this one right here tends to come out a little bit more so than the other one the other one tends to be more shy so anyway um, this is a species that I avoided for the longest time why did I avoid it? For one, every time I saw it at a reptile show, they were so tiny, those slings were so small that I was really intimidated by their size. It was one of those things where I was so afraid that if I bought one, I would kill it 
and I wouldn't be able to take care of it and then I'd end up wasting my money. So that was a big factor as far as why I never got them. I was always in love with their coloration. They're, they're beautiful orange and, and they're that checkered pattern on their, on their abdomen. That was always an attractive thing to me. However, another thing that was not a very attractive thing for me was the fact that they look a little bit like a true spider. In fact, to me, they look kind of like a wolf spider, which is not exactly something that I find attractive in a tarantula because I want something that's a little bit bulkier and looks more like a tarantula. I'm kicking myself now because I found out that this is a very hardy species. I've only gotten them recently and I found out that they are extremely hardy. They're excellent eaters. They're very feisty as far as pursuing food and things like that. They're very aggressive eaters. They live about eight to 10 years, females do. Now, this is the Haplopus species Columbia large. So technically it's not truly a dwarf tarantula. They can get anywhere about three to four inches which is a little bit over the dwarf size, but there is another morph, I believe it is, of the same species, and that one is referred to as the H species Columbia Klein, and that is a smaller version that actually is a true dwarf. Um, they're very easy to care for. I keep mine relatively moist, the substrate kind of damp. I let it dry out on the top a little bit, and um, as far as watering, I don't keep a watering dish in here when they're slings. I just kind of moisten the substrate, sprinkle a little bit on the uh, moss there or the sphagnum moss that I have. But um, for the most part, that's pretty much all I do. And um, these are readily available in the hobby. You can find these just about any reptile show and they're relatively cheap. Usually you can find one for about $25 to $30. So I highly recommend this species. If you don't have a dwarf species, this would be an excellent one to get into. Do I consider it a beginner species? I would say yes, but they are very fast. They're very bolty and they have a tendency to want to climb out of their enclosure. So that's kind of a turnoff if this is your first tarantula. If this is not your first tarantula and you're kind of used to them, but you're still a beginner, then I would definitely recommend them because they're, like I said, they're real hardy and they're great eaters and they grow pretty fast too. Um, I've only had these a couple of months and they've gone from a tiny sling with barely any markings on them to, um, I, I would say it's about maybe a half inch sling at this point and their coloration is bright and beautiful. Number four. Number four is Homeoma chilensis, formerly known as Euathlus species red. And um, this species of tarantula does not get very big. They max out about, I wanna say three inches. And um, this is a very docile species and I don't know their life expectancy, their lifespan. Um, their lifespan, I would assume, would probably be around the 10 year mark, given that they are slow growers. And that's one of the big drawbacks about them. I picked these up almost three years ago in August, it will be three years, and um, they are just now a little over an inch large. And there you see them right there. One of the cool things about this species is that they are so docile and they're kind of inquisitive to the point that almost every time you open up their enclosure, they will come out to greet you and kind of see what you're doing. And they have a tendency to want to walk out and people have them walk out on their hands and stuff because that's just how they are. So that's a really, really cool thing. Um, when I picked these up, I picked these up because I had seen a video by Tom Moran and I saw how sweet natured they were and I just felt like I had to have them. So I happened to go to the National Reptile Breeders Expo that year and um, Fear Not Tarantulas happened to be there and they had some to sell, which is I believe where Tom Moran got his. So I was so excited to get them. At the time I paid $23 a piece for them. And in fact, one of them was given to me as a freebie. But, and I think Tom has a little bit to blame here, a little bit of the blame here, but 
they became very popular and now because of their sweet nature and because of how they are a lot of people um, are seeking them and the demand has gone way up so I've seen them upwards of $50 a piece so this I highly recommend if you can get a hold of them they do come out you see them here and there I know Fear Not gets them every now and then some other websites get them as well um, but they go really really fast and um, like I said, they are very slow growers. So when you get a sling, expect a few years before they even start showing any colors. It took about the full two years for me to see the little red on their abdomen and for them to start getting their dark colors. When they become adults, they'll become a nice black velvety color with a red spot on their abdomen very close to the carapace and they're just an awesome species if you can get a hold of them so this one is number four yes i love them yes they're a great species but they're kind of hard to get right now and as far as keeping them i keep them in semi-moist substrate kind of on the dry side they do like to burrow a little bit and they're pretty good eaters when they're eating right after a molt they have a tendency to eat a lot but then they reach a certain point and then they quit eating and they will fast for a very long time until they, they molt again. Um, I have experienced in the winter time that they will go on a fast and they will not eat until things warm up. So that's just one of the drawbacks about this species. And uh, But once they're eating, they eat very well. Number three, this one is Syria Cosmos elegans. And this one is also lovingly known as the heart butt tarantula. And um, when I first laid eyes on these, I really wanted one just because of their appearance. And um, I didn't care that they were dwarf species. It was just something I had to have because they were probably the cutest tarantula I think I'd ever seen. And um, it didn't take me long to find one. And when I did, I, I purchased it. And I wanted to buy more than one at the time, but um, I believe I bought it through Arachnoiden and he only had one. So this is the one that I got and I believe I was fortunate enough to get a female. So I'm actually gonna do a rehousing for this one because it's been in this little pixie box for its whole life. Um, and it's been fine but I feel like it's ready to move up to something bigger. I'm pretty sure that it's achieved its full size or it might get a little bit bigger. Um, these hail from Trinidad, Tobago, and parts of Venezuela. It is commonly known as the dwarf Trinidad tiger. Now, as far as um, their temperament goes, they don't really live up to that tiger name as far as I'm concerned. They're kind of sweet. A little bit skittish have a tendency to stay down in the burrow so it is kind of a pet hole and I'm gonna say that's probably not maximum size there they get a little bit bigger than that all right so there it is let me see if I can get a closer look at it there we go and there's that signature little heart butt beautiful species I just love them to death and I've been wanting to get more but I seem to have a string of bad luck with them I think they are very temperature sensitive my house gets a little bit cold in the, at night and I used to this was before I had my tarantula room I used to keep them in the living room and it got cooler over there this room stays a little bit warmer so I ended up buying two more and um, they both died on me they were very very tiny slings no coloration probably second in star i would think so they did not survive for me um they don't have a very long lifespan that's one of the things that that i consider a drawback they live probably about five to seven years females will top out anywhere from two to two and a half inches males get a little bit smaller than that of course don't live as long they probably mature really quickly um, i keep them in slightly damp um, substrate nice and moist they do burrow so this will probably end up getting a nice little burrow and stay in there pretty much most of the time one of the things i've noticed is that they have a tendency to um, web the substrate 
kind of like laying down a mat, but they don't necessarily web upward. So they just kind of web around and put a nice thin film of web around their burrow and pretty much stay around the mouth of their burrow. Every now and then at night, they might come out and explore a little bit. So burrowing tarantula, beautiful species, awesome dwarf. Um, do I recommend it as a beginner species? Probably not. The fact that they might be a little bit of a pet hole and just my experience with slings, probably want to keep them a little bit warmer. And uh, they, this one took down prey very readily at a young age. It was taking down fruit flies. As it got bigger, it was taking down small roaches. So I don't know what happened with the other two, but it, I, I'm, I'm attributing it to the temperature in my house. So Cosmos elegans, they grow relatively fast and they're fairly common in the hobby. You can pretty much find them on a lot of the, um, the tarantula websites at reptile shows and things like that. And they tend to run about 30, 30 to $40 a piece for a sling. Number four, this one is also a Cosmos species. This one is known as the Cosmos bicolor and it was formerly known as Cosmos chicoi but it was renamed after it was properly described and now it is Cosmos bicolor. Um, commonly known as the chicoi dwarf. I still see it as that. I haven't seen any name change as far as the common name is concerned. But um, this one is almost like the complete opposite of the Cosmos elegans, the little uh, heart butt tarantula. This one gets a little bit bigger and this one is endemic to Brazil and I'm also doing a rehousing on this one by the way. This one is endemic to Brazil and uh, females can get up to two and a half inches and um, as far as their lifespan is concerned I don't really know a whole lot about them. Um, I, I can't find a lot of information about this species so um, uh, I'm still looking for that information trying to see what I can find out but there's just not a whole lot out there on them. So this one um, has very similar markings to Davis pentalorus. Um, now, not too, too much, but if you notice the, the markings on the abdomen there and so on, and it tends to be a whole heck of a lot feistier than the Cosmos elegans. Um, earlier when I was shooting video of it, as soon as I touched it with the stick, it actually bit the stick. So yeah, they're a little bit feisty and um, they are very, very prone to bolting. So if you try to move them, Oh, and there he's trying to scratch his butt there, trying to flick some hairs. But if you try to move them, they'll usually stand their ground a little bit, but once they get going, they take off. So I gotta be real careful about that. All right, there he goes. So he took off on his own and got into his own enclosure there. So I don't have to worry about moving them. I just kind of have to let him do his thing. So they are beautiful. Oh, there he goes, he's trying to go out the side. I say he, but I believe it's a female. Oh no, now he's leaving. All right. Because a male would have probably already matured by this point. Okay, so hopefully I can get it back in without too much trouble. Oh, there we go. We got to see some bolting there. All right. So this is the Cosmos bicolor. Awesome species. Now, as far as availability is concerned, these are a little bit difficult to find. I got lucky with this one. Um, I also bought this one from Arachnoiden. And um, when I bought it, I was originally wanting Cosmos elegans. And what I usually do is I buy multiples of the same species to try to ensure a female. So I was gonna order three Cosmos bicolor or I'm sorry, three Serial Cosmos Elegans. And um, he wrote me back and said, I only have one Elegans left. Is there anything else you would rather have? So I looked on the list and I saw the Serial Cosmos Chicoy back then. So I said, okay, I'll take that one. And he only had one of that one as well. I wanted two, but he only had one. So I got the Elegans and I got the Chicoy 
and it looks like I got lucky on both and ended up with females for both of them. So this one is one that I obtained out of pure luck. I got it on a whim and it was, I, I didn't know what, I, what to expect. I just knew what it looked like from the pictures that I saw online and everything. But it's really been an interesting little dwarf. Um, if you can find it, I highly recommend it. Is it a beginner species? I would say no. Um, it tends to be feisty. Um, very prone to bolt, but if cornered, it will definitely turn around and bite. And um, sometimes they get some really big bursts of speed. I actually had to catch it one time almost jumping off the table. So you got to be real careful for with them because they will bolt on you and they're really, really fast. So um, yes, this one is another awesome dwarf, but if you can find it, good luck. As far as price is concerned, I believe I paid about $40 for this one, and I have no idea what they're running for now because I have not seen one since. And number one, uh, I think I screwed up the order on the last one. I'll have to clean that up in post. I'm sorry about that. I got all thrown off. I should have just gone one, two, three, four, five. Anyway, number one, uh, if that is the Delicatheli Diamantinensis formerly known as Oliga Zystri diamantinensis. And um, if there is one species that I consider bulletproof, and I'm talking about all my tarantulas, that is this species right here. And um, they top out about three inches for females, and they're pretty relatively long-lived, about 12 to 15 years for females. Um, males don't live as long, about four or five years. Um, they mature really, really fast as far as males are concerned. Females are supposed to mature really fast as well. Now, again, this might be a temperature thing, but um, I have not had, maybe my females are mature, but I have not had a male mature out yet, and they're supposed to mature probably some of them within six to eight months um, from what I've read. So if you keep them warmer and you power feed them, then you're probably going to mature them real, real fast. But I'm sure I have a male in there somewhere because I've got four of them. I actually have six of them, but um, yeah, I haven't had a, a male mature out just yet. So anyway, about this species, like I said, if I consider one to be bulletproof, it would be this particular one. And that's because they're very, very hardy. Um, a lot of people refer to them as a mini GBB. But in my opinion, the colors are a lot more brilliant and they get colors really, really fast. Um, mine started showing colors about the one to one and a half inch point and you start seeing all the little blue hair coming in and uh, it just gets better from there. They grow relatively fast from the sling stage to the juvenile stage. It's like a blink of an eye, they're, they're, they're big all of a sudden. They will take down just about anything, even from an early stage from the little slings that I have. You throw in some small roaches that are over their size, that are larger than their size, and they will take them down. Um, they do not refuse food. They're always eating except when they're in pre or post molt. Um, for the most part, you can drop anything in there and they will attack it, including a stick or your finger or anything like that. So they are feisty. Um, their colors are just incredible. What you see in this video is the true colors. I haven't boosted the colors. I haven't, you know, oversaturated or anything like that. And they pretty much stay like that all the time. When they are close to molt, I do have some that are in pre-molt they will start to dull down a little bit, but the, the, the blues will just not be as vibrant. The green on the carapace will still be there and the red will still be there. And then when they molt, they just get brilliant all over again. Um, these are also endemic to Brazil. And um, as far as water is concerned, when I had them, they like to have it dry in their enclosure. So they're kept very similar to the green bottle blue. Um, they like it nice and dry. However, I do moisten them a little bit more than I would a green bottle blue, especially in the sling stage. Um, they do require a little bit of moisture. I just worry about the possibility of a bad molt and that kind of thing. I haven't killed one yet, which is, I can't say that about everything that I've had. These are, you know, very, very hardy. Um, so what I do is when I, when I keep them in slings, I keep them in the little pixie boxes 
keep the, the substrate relatively moist when I feed. I will water and I will drip a little bit of water on the webbing and that will just bead up right there and that's where they drink from. I never put a water dish in there. Um, as you can see in this enclosure right here, I do have a water dish. However, it's all webbed up and it doesn't have it, it, it really doesn't suit a purpose anymore. I just kind of sprinkle water over it and they'll drink from there. Most of their moisture will come from the prey that they eat. So probably why they eat so readily and so they, they have such a strong appetite because um, I, I don't really see them drinking all that much. So I just kind of do it as a safeguard and just to make sure that they don't end up drying out too much. There are some conflicting reports about their temperament. Now, most of us can agree that as slings, they're incredibly bolty. They'll want to run out. As soon as you open the lid, they'll take off. However, my experience has been that once they web up their enclosure, as you've seen here, it will pretty much stay within its webbing and it won't take off outside of it unless it gets really, really uncomfortable. Now, the AC is blowing right now. You can see the the webbing moving around. So that's a little bit uncomfortable for it and it was trying to get underneath the webbing. It's probably due for a new enclosure so that it can have more webbing and more tunnels for it to burrow into. But um, once they establish themselves and get their webbing in there, they, they just did not want to run out. They would just go into their webbing and stay in there where they felt secure. Um, but one of the things that's conflicting is that when they get into their adult stages, some people say that theirs got really docile, even to the point of handleability. And other people say that they got very defensive and um, to the point of wanting to bite. So uh, in my experience, it's been that they have gotten pretty defensive. They're still bolty. They'll try to retreat into the burrow or whatever. But for the most part, uh, they will stand their ground and I get threat postures from them all the time even venom dripping from the fangs and they will slap and, and do all that kind of stuff as you saw in the video there um, yeah it, it will rear up and, and it won't hesitate to show its fangs now that particular one it was recently molted. You can see that the fangs are not quite uh, hardened completely. They're not completely black. So that's part of the reason why it's so defensive at this time. Now, would I recommend them as a beginner species? Probably not. I would probably consider this to be a more intermediate species. Um, if I'd have had this at the beginning when I first started out, I would have probably been a little bit afraid of it just because of the boltiness, the fact that it wants to run out when they're little slings. Um, they're very skittish and in my experience, very defensive when they've gotten into their, their adult stages. So um, yeah, that can be a little bit intimidating when you have a tarantula that's rearing up at you and slapping at you, bearing its fangs. Um, so I would not recommend this as a beginner unless you've had a little bit of experience and know what to expect. Uh, and know how to deal with a bolting tarantula and something that might get out of its enclosure and so on. If you notice on these, I did not take them out of the enclosure because they are so bolty. If I'd have tried to put them on the table here with some cork bark and things like that, more than likely psh, they'd have supermaned right off the table and taken off because that's just how they are. They're, they're very quick and very bolty and prone to just taking off at great bursts of speed. So yeah, I would say this is an intermediate species. A couple of runner-up species that I have, one was the Seriocosmus leetzi. Yes, there are a lot of dwarfs in the Seriocosmus genus. Um, Seriocosmus leetzi, I have two slings of those that I recently acquired, and um, I didn't really have a whole lot to show you. Uh, not to mention, I haven't had them long enough to really know about their temperament, and how to keep them, and all the other stuff that goes along with it. So I didn't feel comfortable presenting that as one of the dwarf species that I would recommend. Um, also, when I did record them, I had one that was a no-show. And the other one snatched its prey and went right back down in the burrow, and that's all we saw of it. So, so um, Syriacosmus leetzi is another really cool dwarf. Um, they're relatively cheap, probably about $30 as well, just like the Syria Cosmos Elegans, and their husbandry is just about the same. And the other runner-up was the Cochiana brunipes. 
I have two specimens of that species and both of them are teeny tiny slings. So I didn't feel right showing or showcasing those tarantulas when you can barely see them. Um, not to mention they're both kind of in pre-molt and they weren't taking prey or anything like that. Uh, I do have a mature male of that species, but I didn't want to showcase a mature male. Uh, I would rather have a nice, beautiful female specimen that I can show you and have a little bit more experience with them so that I can give you a little bit more background info on them. Although I did raise the mature male, um, I, I would like to know a little bit more. All right, so I mentioned that I needed your input on something as far as the future of this channel is concerned. So this is that time. I am considering changing my logo. So I, I've kind of felt like that logo was a little bit too simplistic and I wanted to go something a little bit more accurate as far as a spider is concerned. So this is the first logo and this is my new logo. And the input that I need from you is whether or not you think I should change my logo. Because if I change my logo, I'm going to change my merchandise and I'm going to go through a whole renovation. I'm actually switching to a different company from Redbubble because I'm not really happy with Redbubble. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to pump out more merchandise for you. So let me know in the comments down below, do you like the old logo or do you like the new logo? Which one should I go with? So that wraps it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Richard, thank you so much for the free swag. I really appreciate it. I will wear it proudly. If you haven't seen Richard's channel, check him out down below. Click on the link to the Tarantula Collective. And if you want to buy your own merch from the Tarantula Collective, there's also a link down below to his Amazon page. Carlo, awesome work. Thank you so much for the stickers. I really appreciate it. If you want to get your own stickers or anything else tarantula related, go check out everythingexotic.com. I've also got a link down below in the description where you can get your tarantula merch. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Redbubble store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Any of the proceeds that come from the merchandise will go directly to help grow and support this channel. There's a link down below in the description as well. Until next time, keep loving them dwarf tarantulas.